guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. Today is another thrift flip video where I take items I've thrifted and upcycled them for resale. So I've had this little moss square box thing for a while and it is springtime now. So I have got to get this done. I've had an idea for it since I purchased it. I want it to be like a mat of a picture. So I'm going to frame it out and then I'm going to have wood in the center where I'm either going to put a quote or a picture. I haven't quite figured it out yet. I want to make the wood background for it and then just see what it's telling me it wants to be. Got to get it done. Had it for a while. Got to get it out of here. I feel like this is so perfect for somebody's house year round, but especially for spring. I feel like that's the time to sell it. So. We're gonna get that project done. And then I posted a picture of this Franken spindle, not Franken spindle, Franken board. That's what I called it anyway, where I took a spindle and I took a breadboard and I put it together for like the cutest, just, I don't even know what to say about it. It's a spindle and an old 100 euro board. It is amazing. And of course, y'all wanted to know how I made it. Spoiler alert, I have one right here. This is the first one that I made. But I'm going to go ahead and make one on camera so y'all can see exactly how I did it in case you also want to make your own Franken spindle. So let's go ahead and get started on these projects. I'm going to be using fence boards to build the box for this piece. The first thing I need to do is measure to see how big I need my pieces to be. And then I'm going to go to my miter saw and I want to cut three 17 and a half inch long pieces and that'll make a nice little square to use on the back of this piece i use fencing for my projects that's what i'm used to using that's what i enjoy using but you can use whatever kind of wood you want for this now i need to attach my three pieces of wood together i'm using five millimeter underlayment this is a lot thinner than you've seen me use on my signs but since i am putting a frame around this, the frame will help keep the whole piece together. I just need something thin to keep my boards together at the moment. Now I need to decide how tall I want my sides to be. So I just grabbed a few boards I had laying around the workshop. That way I can visually see how tall I want it to be. Okay, I think this is a perfect fit. It just comes up a little bit higher than the grass. So I'm gonna go cut some fence boarding down to size on my table saw. I've cut two pieces 17 and a half inches long and I'm gonna put it on two sides of this, the top and the bottom. I always attach two sides first and then I measure and attach the other two sides. I just find this is the quickest way to have no measuring mistakes. Once it's actually on there, then you go measure it. So this is how I do it. I put my board up and then I just draw a line with a pencil. I don't take out the tape measure. For me, that's the easiest way to figure out exactly where I need to cut it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and attach the last two pieces with my nail gun. Once my piece is all together, I like to give it a nice sand down using my orbital sander. I like to round out all my edges and just make sure everything's smooth and any extra dirt and grime is off. You also want to make sure you are wearing a respiratory mask when you are sanding. To paint this piece, I'm going to be using the ready to use antique white paint from Walmart in a flat finish. This is what I use on all my signs. I like to put a nice thick coat using the paint to fill in any cracks, especially when I know I'm going to be painting words on a sign. It just makes for a smoother finish to then be able to go and put your words on top. I want to lightly distress this piece just to smooth out the paint and make sure it is ready for my words to go on. I don't like to overly distress my pieces. I just usually hit the edges with the sander and make sure the part I'm gonna be putting the words on is nice and smooth. Now to attach the words, I decided to go ahead and put the greenery in place just to make sure it's centered because the worst thing that could happen is for me to write the words on and then find out that it's not centered. So just take this extra time, make sure everything is centered perfectly before you get started with your letters. Now I use 
uh, transfer paper, carbon paper. This is in my Amazon store. The link is in the description. And you just put it under your printout and then you just trace over it. And then this transfers it onto the words, I mean, onto the wood. So then you can go back and paint your words on. To paint the wording on, I'm gonna be using this painter's pen with a fine tip. This is my favorite to use when I'm doing like smaller, more detailed letters. You can find these paint pens at Walmart. That is the cheapest option, but they also have them on Amazon. They're just a little bit more expensive. And then what I do is I just go back and trace the outline that I just created with my transfer paper. The quote I chose for this piece is home, the story of who we are and the collections of the things we love. I just really love this quote. And when picking a quote for my signs, I just think about where the placement of this sign might be. And I was just thinking an entryway or a foyer, it would look re really pretty there. So then I tried to pick a quote that I think would look good in that area. And that's kind of my thought process on how I pick quotes for these specific signs that I create. When painting the signs, I just try to have a smooth, steady hand. That's why I normally would never um, frame out a sign before I put the wording on because I wanna make sure I can get my hand nice and flat. But I thought for this sign, it would be okay since there wasn't any wording way at the bottom. And I've never really messed up a sign. Mostly my main area is uh, error is misspelling words, which I already know that. And you can always paint white over it and try it again. My customers are coming to me for the handcrafted look that my signs have. So I don't think perfection is needed, but it definitely needs to look good. But I've gotten really good at this technique over the years. So honestly, I think it looks great and my customers love it. So this is the way that I'm gonna keep doing it. And if you're trying it out for the first time, just don't be too hard on yourself. Sometimes it takes a little bit of practice. My recommendation would be to start off with bigger type, not smaller type. Smaller detail type is definitely much harder. Now it's time to put the hanging hardware on. And normally this is something I think about when I'm making the sign, but I totally made a rookie mistake here. I did not think about it. Luckily these heavy duty D ring hangers works out perfectly where I can get a nice screw in there. I like to hang it all the way on the side and to the top. I just find it so much easier for the customers to hang up their signs when you put the clips this way. So this is a heavy duty D-ring, but normally I use the lightweight D-rings and I have all of these different kind of hangers linked in my Amazon store below. I also use the little sawtooth hook ones a lot as well. So it just depends on the weight and the size of the sign on what I'm gonna use. Okay, now I'm ready to put my greenery mat in. I decided the best way to attach this would be hot glue. So I'm just gonna add a nice layer of hot glue to this and push it down. Luckily it fits in here so nice and sm snug. I don't think this is going anywhere. And since it's nice and framed out, you don't have to worry about this moss getting anywhere. Like once it's hung up on the wall, it should be good to go. for all my breadboards but you can use whatever type of wood you have available and like this one is full of nails and just awesomeness and I'm gonna leave that because I feel like that pairs so well with the chippiness going on in the spindle now 
they did have a crack down this board so i've already glued it together using my wood glue clamped it together and just for good measure i put this piece of metal here to keep it together anytime you get like metal rusty pieces keep them they just look so cute as added little details on breadboards or boxes or whatever you're making just to add a little more character i've already cut the breadboard to the size i don't want it to be i want it to be pretty tall and this is the spindle i've decided to use now i'm going to put the block part here and let the top of the spindle go up i like to freeform the sides of the breadboard so i'm just going to put my spindle in the middle and use that as like the sizing of where I want the curve to be. And then I'm just gonna draw out one side. Then I'm gonna use my jigsaw to cut out that one side. You could also use a scroll saw or a band saw or whatever you have available. I just don't have those types of tools yet. So I just use my jigsaw and I use a smooth wood cutting blade. Now you're gonna take the cut off side flip it over and use that to trace the other side. For me, this is the best way to get a very symmetrical piece. Even if you do both sides using a template, I find they never come out exactly the same. To me, this is the best way to get it out, get it exactly the same. Now I wanna take the spindle to my table saw to cut up some of this square part and this will help to put the two pieces securely together. Now you want to be careful and not cut too much. You're just using this table saw to get a nice straight line. Cause look, when I turn it over, you see how much it cut on the other side. So you want to be careful not to cut too much. Now that we have this nice line, we're going to take our jigsaw and go and cut the rest of it. So I'm gonna cut all the way up to where I want it to stop and then I'm gonna cut the side. This is gonna enable me to put it perfectly on top of the breadboard and have a nice surface area to attach it to the breadboard so it's nice and secure. This step is not necessary if you have a different way to attach it, but this is the way that I decided to do it. Now we're gonna get back to the breadboard. I'm just using some 220 grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna sand the edges that I cut. I am not going to sand this piece down or clean up this piece too much. I love the way this looks. I am selling it as a beautiful piece of decor. It takes a long time for a piece of wood to get this kind of age. So the last thing I want to do is sand all off all of this beautiful finish that it already has on it. Now you notice that the sides that I cut do not match the rest of the board. So to fix it and make this um, fresh cut blend in with the rest of it, I'm gonna use the Waverly Antiquing Wax Water Down Mixture. I just keep it in this container because I use it all the time. And since I don't wanna change the rest of the piece on this one, I'm just gonna try to get it on the fresh cut. It just depends on the piece of wood. Sometimes I put it on the entire breadboard and sometimes like this, I just put it on the edges and it'll make the whole um, it'll make those fresh cuts look a lot darker and blend in so much better with the rest of your board, which will make this piece look like a hundred year old breadboard instead of just a board. And that is exactly the look that we are going for here. I want to clean up this piece, but I still want to maintain the character. So I'm not going to clean it too much. I'm just going to kind of brush off any dirt or anything that's on there any chips that are very loose should come off and then i'm going to cover it with a couple coats of minwax polyacrylic in the color matte that'll seal everything in but also maintain the beautiful old chippy look that we love from this spindle to attach the spindle to the board i decided to use gorilla clear grip instead of wood glue because it's not totally flat here. You're using two very old pieces of wood and I feel like wood glue, you ha have to have a very smooth finish and a very tight bond for it to seal and glue together really well. So I feel like this Gorilla Glue is a better option. So I'm putting that on here and then I'm going to nail it in place. I'm gonna put one nail 
in the front using my brad nailer then i'm gonna turn it over and secure it with some extra nails in the back and then this piece is done and i love the way it turned out y'all please let me know what y'all think about this piece i want to know what your opinion is I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. Please leave a comment below and let me know what was your favorite project that I worked on. If these are the kind of videos you love, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I do these thrift flip videos every single week. I hope y'all have a wonderful day and I will see y'all in the next video. Thanks for watching and give this video a big thumbs up.